Frames have dimensions. It could be how tall they are, how wide, or maybe how thick its layers have to be. These values are very important for an excellent design to be made. Now that is one cute little boy. Let's talk about food. This squirrel is taking small bits of the cake every single time. An action referred to as nibbling. That's how cakes should be eaten if you want it to last longer, right? Now, this lady obviously eats more than the squirrel because she's having a huge bite every single time. How many small bits of cake do you think will be the same as the size of a huge bite? I can tell you something for free. If you ask this question to a computer, the computer will say that 8 bits make a single byte, which is very true. Ethernet frame sizes are described in terms of one dimension, its length. But how is this length measured? In centimeters? Inches? Certainly not. They are measured in bytes of data. Hang on, while we describe the size of the Ethernet 2 frame, and the concept of late collisions and runt frames. Hello guys, today we'll talk about the size of the Ethernet frame. First of all, try to remember these four numbers. 2, 4, 6, and 8. Here's a nice way to match them onto these fields. The type field begins with the letter T, so it takes the number 2. The type field is 2 bytes long. The FCS begins with an F, so number 4 has got this one. If you ever forget the size of a MAC address, just remember that there are 6 zeros in a million. The MAC address field is 6 bytes, and the preamble takes the last number, 8 bytes. What is the size of the data that Ethernet carries? Well, it's between 46 to 1,500 bytes. This means we have between 64 to 1,518 bytes for the entire frame when the header and trailer to be used for encapsulation are included. One may ask why this range was chosen. The reason is due to the limitation of collision detection, which we shall describe shortly. Assuming PCA wishes to send a frame with a size that is much less than the minimum size of 64 bytes to PCB in a far distance, there is a possibility that PCA will send the last bit of this frame and the first bit hasn't reached PCB. If PCB employs CSMA and listens for traffic during this time, it will assume the link is available for use since it has not received any part of the frame sent by PCA, and hence will not detect any ongoing transmission. If it proceeds to transmit its own frame, this will cause a collision. Any frame with a length that is much less than the minimum size of 64 bytes is called a runt frame. Finally, what is late collision? Simply put, just like the name implies, a type of collision that is not detected early. If PCA and PCB transmit data at the same time with the entire frame placed on the link, as in this animation, they both assume a successful transmission as no collision was detected while transmitting. These frames end up colliding much later and although end stations may receive corrupted signals, they do not know that this is a late collision from their own transmission. This means they don't attempt to retransmit the same data as they never detected a collision while they were transmitting and only assumed that the destination device has received the correct frame. In summary, the limitation of CSMA slash CD and the maximum transmission distance were the main factors used to determine the chosen minimum size of an Ethernet frame. As long as the first bit in the frame reaches the destination device before the entire frame is placed on the network, career sends performed by the destination will detect a transmission and hence no cases of late collision since the frame will not be let loose between source and destination devices.
Check out the questions on the next slide. Up next, we're moving to the network layer of the OSI model, where we discuss the internet protocol, IP addressing, subnetting, and other related topics. Please like, subscribe to this channel, and share. Thank you for watching.